Good evening and welcome to Kini News. The Perikatan National Government and Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin have been receiving a lot of flack lately. And based on the hashtags that we've been seeing trending on Twitter, the dissatisfaction appears to be growing and Muhyiddin appears to be aware of that. Not many Prime Ministers would go on television and tell the whole country that accept being called stupid, but that's what Muhyiddin Yassin did on Sunday night. He said he was prepared to take abuse from the public amid frustration over measures against COVID-19, but urged people to play their part in bringing the pandemic under control. Bolehlah blame kerajaan. Marah Perdana Menteri pun tak apalah. Saya terima lah. Rakyat kata marah apa bodoh Perdana Menteri kata tak apa. Saya boleh cakap dalam TV pun kata. Tapi saya tahu macam mana susah nak menguruskan ini. Jadi ini satu tanggungjawab bersama. Jadi kalau kita sedia menerima hakikat inilah masalah bersama. Yang kita kata approach kita bukan whole of government. Bukan soal whole of government. It is whole of society. Seluruh masyarakat mesti berganding bahu. Baru kita boleh landaikan lengkok apa COVID-19. Muhyiddin said the government has granted any request that the health ministry wanted to help fight the pandemic. But no amount of extra hospital beds will help if the number of COVID-19 cases continues to climb. He noted that in some hospitals, the remains of the dead now have been stored in containers. Muhyiddin also said the light at the end of the tunnel was not too far off. He said the procurement of COVID-19 vaccines was settled, as the government has already ordered for more than 100% of the population. However, he said now the issue is not whether we will get the supply or not. The question is when they will arrive. The Bersato president also explained why the government cannot impose the same version of the movement control order first implemented last year, though it would be the best option. He said the economic impact would be severe and will cost the government much more than the first MCO. Jadi apakah bila keadaan sas begini, kita nak bawa balik PKP 1 dulu. Memang kalau nak kan saya dan saya fikir KKM, Kementerian Kesihatan kata itu yang terbaik dalam sini. Hmm. Tapi kesan pada negara macam mana dari sisi soal kehidupan. Hmm. Tapi kalau rakyat tak ada bekerja, ekonomi dah runtuh, nak bangunkan semula, saya terpaksa belanja 340 bilion ringgit dengan pakej 6 kali pakej rangsangan. Hmm. Bukan sedikit, tak pernah berlaku dalam sejarah. Kalau kita nak buat sekali lagi, 340 bilion tak cukup. Mm -hmm. Pasal dia akan terkesan lebih besar lagi. Mm -hmm. Mungkin saya kena sediakan setengah triliun. Thanks to one man's eager eye, underdosing may now be a thing of the past, as the ministry has issued a directive to make sure that every Malaysian is getting the recommended dose of the vaccine. Just four days after Anugrehan Manoharan noticed that he was given less than the recommended dose of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, BP Healthcare reviewed his complaint and decided to re-vaccinate him. Anugrehan first noticed the underdose issue when studying a video of his COVID-19 vaccination jab on May 19th. He said from the day he reported his suspicion, he has been in contact with the BP Healthcare legal team regarding his situation. After reviewing his complaint, BP Healthcare asked him to make his way to the World Trade Center, Kuala Lumpur, to receive the proper dose on Sunday. According to product information leaflets available from the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency's website, one dose of the vaccine is 0.5 milliliters. Anugrahan claimed that the person who injected the vaccine also did not write her name on his consent form, which he was informed is part of the standard procedure. Following this, a directive has been issued to medical personnel assisting in the COVID-19 vaccination efforts under Protect Malaysia to show recipients the syringe filled with the COVID-19 vaccine in it. This comes amid complaints that some medical personnel had drawn an erroneous amount of the vaccine in the AstraZeneca voluntary program, leading to underdosing. Malaysia Kini cited a message informing all those administering the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine to show the full syringe as well as the emptied syringe after the vaccination. The message added that they should ensure the correct volume is shown, which is 0.5 milliliters. A health ministry officer confirmed with Malaysia Kini that the message was authentic. Complaints about underdosing emerged after a number of people recorded themselves while receiving their COVID-19 jabs. Still on the vaccine, on social media, we often hear complaints about how the vaccination process in Malaysia is slow. But in the state of Kelantan, however, thousands aren't even showing up for their vaccination appointments. Now, before we move on to that, if you'd like to see more content just like this, click the link in the description to become a contributor.
nearly 10,000 residents of Klantan did not turn up to receive their COVID-19 vaccine jabs as of yesterday. Most of them who failed to show up were the elderly aged 60 and above. State Health Department Director Dr Zaini Hussein said one of the reasons for their absence was due to health problems. According to him, there were also those who could not attend due to personal problems and postponed to another date. All those who did not attend the vaccination were those who registered for the second phase. Zaini explained that in the event an individual is unable to attend to get the vaccine on the scheduled appointment date, health officials will then contact other people on the waiting list to avoid wasting the vaccine supply. He added that those who want to postpone the date or change the location of their vaccination centre need to contact the My Sajatra hotline to do so. Another day passes and another day, Malaysia reports over 6,000 new COVID-19 cases. The Health Ministry reported 6,509 new COVID-19 cases today, with Selangor still far ahead of any other state or territory with over 2,000 cases. Meanwhile, Sarawak reported 530 new cases, followed by Kuala Lumpur with 468. Labuan, which have been relatively free of COVID-19, reported triple digits for the first time ever with 171 new cases. Over the past 14 days, the region only reported 60 new cases on average daily. Slango Menteri Besar Amiruddin Shari announced today that the state government will consider a proposal for COVID-19 screening test to be conducted from house to house. However, he said it would depend on the availability of manpower, including volunteers. Shellfish, red meat, and beer. If you love indulging in these foods, you may end up with high uric acid level in your blood. These foods consist high level of purine, a substance that will eventually break down into uric acid and be excreted through our urine. It is recommended that the amount of dietary purines should be kept between 600 to 1,000 milligrams per day. Having too much uric acid in your blood can cause attacks of gout. It can also cause kidney stones and blockage in the kidney. The crystallization of the excessive uric acid in your blood can be eased by reducing purine-rich food to only 100 to 150 milligrams daily, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and consuming urinary alkalinizer like Ural. It consists of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium citrate that increases the urinary pH and solubility of uric acid to prevent crystallization. Best of all, it's lemon-flavored and sugar-free. Ural, effective urinary alkalinizer. Neutralize your uric acid problem now. Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob had ordered Resorts World Gunting to shut its casino on Friday and today it finally happened. Resorts World Gunting will temporarily close its casino starting 5pm today until further notice. This followed allegations that a COVID-19 cluster in Kedah was linked to a tour group that visited the resort in Pahang. In a statement, the report said that apart from the casino closure, the rest of the resort will limit operating hours from 8am to 8pm from tomorrow until the 7th of June. This will apply to the resort's hotels, food and beverage outlets, shopping malls, retail outlets and other facilities. Meanwhile, a Gunting Casino staff told Malaysia Kini that they were only informed of the closure in the afternoon and that the casino will be off limits from 5pm onwards. On May 19th, the Kedah Exco member in charge of health and local government, Dr. Muhammad Hayati Othman, said 16 people who tested positive for COVID-19 were traced to the tour group. This morning, a casino employee told Malaysia Kini that there were still punters in the facility, despite claims by Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob that he had ordered it shut on Friday. That's a wrap for Kini News this evening. For more stories, go to kinitv.com and also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook to get the latest news headlines over there as well. If you would like to support the independent media, please do consider a subscription to malaysiakini.com. If you're heading out, don't forget your mask and when you can, please do try to stay home. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching and as always, stay safe Malaysia.